Though the weather outside is frightful But the fire is so delightful And since we've no place to go Let it snow, let Welcome it snow. back to Movies with McLean. Merry Christmas to all 12 of you viewers. It's been a great year. And to our friends viewing across the pond, Happy Kwanzaa. We have a very special Christmas episode today. And with me for the first time is Matt Dickout. How's it going? Doing well, doing well. Long time listener, first time guest. <laughs> I'm glad to have you, man. And uh, back for his third time, it's Grant Hoffman. How's oh, it going, Grant? It's going great. I'm glad to be back. Yeah, I'm glad He's to have you. Boring. <laughs> hey, it's going to be a great show, and uh, we're going to talk about our favorite Christmas movies today, but first up, as always, we're getting to the movie news. No Netflix rundown today, we're just getting straight into the news. So, our first news topic is, again, trailers. We have four trailers to talk about in the past week. Baywatch, Spider-Man Homecoming, War for the Planet of the Apes, and Fast and Furious 8. I'm not saying the other title because it's really dumb. So, which of these trailers stands out to you guys? Which one uh, really got you hyped for the movie? Yeah. So the first one that's come right off the bat for me is Baywatch. One, boobies. That's why. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> Baywatch that looks like actually a really funny movie. Usually I'm not into these just corny, just overtly sexual movies, but this one actually looks really, really funny. Uh, you got Zac Efron, The Rock, uh, working together, and probably, uh, have they ever done a movie together? Can I, don't I get a weigh so. in from no, the experts? I don't think so. No? Can I get a fact check? They, um, I'll check it, but I'm pretty sure. Dave from not. Statistics is going to give us a little fact check? No? Okay, we're going to move on. <laughs> so, Dave, you're fired. It looks like a really, really funny movie. I like to see how they're working together. It looks like some cool action scenes as well. All Real funny, uh, great comedy. Uh, Zach Efron, you know, he made some crap uh, in his earlier uh, years, but. Recently, he's just been busting out those great comedies. You got Neighbors, Mike and Date, Need Wedding Dates, and now Baywatch. Uh, I think it looks hilarious. It looks like he's got uh, great chemistry with uh, The Rock. And any time The Rock's in something now, you know it's just going to be entertaining. So, Grant, what are your thoughts on Baywatch? I'm thinking Baywatch looks really funny. Um, I think that Zac Efron and Dwayne Johnson are going to work really well together. It kind of reminds me of... 21 Jump Street, a little okay. bit, like if that kind of makes sense. I mean, and I really like those movies, so I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, yeah, you got sort of like uh, Zac Efron's like the Jonah Hill type. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> Yeah, look, I think it looks great. So uh, what about Spider-Man Homecoming? What do we think of that trailer? Uh, I don't know. I'm not I, I think I'm with Drain on this one. I'm a little up in the air. Just the intro music, just the, the the rotating door of different Spider-Mans. I like Garfield a lot, but I'm a little worried about this new guy. What's his name? Dave from Statistics? It's Tom Holland. Tom Holland, thanks. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm not, not super excited about this one. It looks a little corny, I think. Um, Tony Stark is just a weird dynamic in it, too. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be pleasantly surprised if, it, if it's better. I was always a big Spider-Man guy growing up, but I really do not have high hopes for this, but... Hope to be surprised. Grant? Um, yeah, I'm going to have to agree with Matt. I don't think it looks too good, but then again, with Marvel Studios and all the Marvel movies, they rarely yeah. tend to disappoint. They usually have some good going for them there. So I think it's going to be pretty good. I just don't think it's going to be on par like with the bar that they've set for all their recent movies, which have been very good. Do you think Spider-Man finally gets to be an Avenger? Uh, not in this movie. I think by the end of, like, Infinity War, like, yeah. he'll be on the team, like, permanently after that. And then I think he's going to carry the franchise. Yeah, eventually. how do we feel about that? How do we feel about him joining the Avengers? I, I like it. I think that, uh, he, he's one of the funniest Spider-Mans that we've seen. Um, yeah, definitely have it has a goofy edge to him. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I think, uh, while this wasn't the best trailer, like you said, uh, Grant, I agree that... Kevin Feige, like the executive producer at, or whatever his title is at Marvel, he's just like the master. Like all, he's got like control over all these movies, and they, in my opinion, they've only made one bad movie. So I'm not too worried, even though I didn't think the trailer was great. I know most people did really like it, but I just thought it was a little corny. But um, I'm still excited for the movie. Uh, anything else on Spider-Man? Yeah, I, I, I'm a little. I'm worried about it, but as in any Marvel movie, I think kind of like the lead-ups to the Avengers movies are always a little more subpar to kind of the beginning to an end. So, uh, we'll see how it goes, but not high expectations. Yep. You got anything? No, I said my piece. 
All right, well, we'll move on to the next trailer. I think this one was just incredible. War for the Planet of the Apes. Grant, yes. you want to start us off talking about this? I agree. I really want to talk about this one. I think this one is going to improve upon the franchise, Like, which I've heard both movies have been very good. I've only seen the first one, but when I saw the trailer for this one, it got me really hyped for the movie. looks like it's going to be very good in that it looks like, I mean, a lot of it's been like equally for like the humans and the apes, but now it looks like it's favoring Caesar and the apes a lot more now, and I think that's going to be like an interesting take. It's kind of showing like the cruelty of the people, and I think it's just going to be like a really good like darker look at them, darker look at the movie, put a good spin on the franchise. Yeah, I think it looks awesome. It, it just looks like a gritty war film that pits humans against apes, and I mean, I guess that sounds obvious, but like it looks like it could almost be like an R-rated movie with some of like the like the gruesomeness of, of uh, what we're going to see in this. And uh, I just think uh, it's going to be incredible with some of the action scenes that are going to be in this. Anytime there's a um, anytime there's apes on horses, mm -hmm. I mean, there's just craziness. Yeah, you got on. my That's attention. Awesome. Apes on horses. Uh, I think really this is a what you see is what you get with this movie. Like battle scenes, monkeys holding guns, spears. Horses. Absolutely an absence of all women. I'm excited. I'm into it. So we'll see. I'm thinking, I mean, Woody Harrelson's pretty hit or miss. Like, he has good movies and bad movies. But this one, I think it, he, it looks like he's going to be a little weird. But I think he'll, like, put on a good performance. Yeah, well, they had that, that scene in the trailer that I thought was pretty sweet where they had him putting the gun to the ape's head. I'm oh, not sure yeah. if that was Caesar or, or... It's hard to tell, but that looks pretty awesome. So, um... You know, I guess he's taken over now for the uh, for the humans, and it looks like it's really going to blur the lines where you're not going to know who, which side you're going to be on watching this movie, and I think that's just going to make it so interesting to watch, and I'm very excited to see this one. Agreed. All right, let's move on to Fast and Furious 8. Uh, that trailer came out. Uh, Matt, you want to start us off talking about this? Yeah, so Fast and Furious, it's been with us forever and they continue without Paul Walker so this is like the first uh, independent of Paul Walker movie that kind of added him in at the very end and did the whole Wiz Khalifa sing-along final goodbye to Paul so it'll be see to, it'll be interesting to see how that goes kind of similar to Planet of the Apes what you see is what you get with these movies you know coming in it's a Fast and the Furious movie it's like going to TGI Fridays man you know what you're going to get you know it's going to be good, you know, you're going to enjoy yourself, you know, you're going to get the, the sizzling queso and a, and a good meal. You know, you know going in it's going to be good, but, you know, it's not going to be that different, it's going to be similar. The Rock is in the second one of our trailers of tonight, so he's really on fire right now, but yeah. Fast and the Furious, you know you're going to get something good, but don't expect too much different. Car races, action, couple love scenes, that's about it. You know, I'm going to have to disagree a little bit where you say don't expect too much different. They're bringing in a submarine in this, uh, if you saw that shot at the end. I think it's just getting, just going to keep getting crazier every with every movie. And I don't know how long it's going to be before they're, like, in space. Like, honestly. Like, they're starting to do all these spin-offs. Like, Please they, kill it before make, they go to space. I mean, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. But, like, it, it could get weird and it could get bad. But, like, they might honestly, like, get that far eventually. So, it's getting crazier. Let's but, yeah, this, well, one, like, this one looks awesome. I... Charlize Theron is a great actress, and I think she can be, like, kind of menacing as a villain, but I didn't like the look of her in this with, like, the she's, like, the tech genius. Thing. Yeah, and she's, like, kind of weird. She's, like, banging Vin Diesel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's kind of a little bit recycling the plot from the sixth one, right? Like, the person with all the high tech, and then the person yeah. doesn't yeah. have a memory. And yeah, they, they classically control. bring back villains. I think yeah. Statham's in it again. So yeah. it's just, like, like team but, up but it looks kind of cool, though. Like, it, yeah, it looks cool, but it's just, like... Okay, how many times have we seen villain comes back, oh, written in contract, good guy now. Yeah. You know, I've seen it before. I think they could do yeah, better. Yeah, I mean, and, like, one of my issues with this series is just how unrealistic it's gotten. Like, I mean, and I wasn't, I was okay with Fast Five, and Fast Five was pretty unrealistic, but, like, when it comes to, like, driving down, like, a runway for 15 minutes and jumping from not yeah. one skyscraper, but two skyscrapers. Yeah. I hope they get another scene where they just stare at each other in a long extended driveway and instead of fighting each other they just get in their cars and ram each other <laughs> I hope I can get another one of those cause you know whenever I have to take out anger I just get in my car and just full speed ram someone else yeah and... well we're all gonna enjoy Fast and Furious oh, whether, yeah. whether it's uh, another 
Another Vin Diesel. Jacob Wife gets a TGI Friday because you know it's inevitable. Pass. Yeah, you know it's gonna happen. Hopefully, The Rock wins this time. Um, nah. Yeah. Nah, The Rock's gotta win, but uh, he will. So, yeah, you're right. But yeah, whether whether it's a little over the top or it's just the right amount of craziness, I think we'll all still enjoy it. So now it's time to move on to our next piece of movie news: Golden Globes. Uh, all the nominations came out uh, this past week, so. We're just specifically going to talk about the movies that were nominated for Best Picture. So those movies are Lion, Hell or High Water, Moonlight, Hacksaw Ridge, and Manchester by the Sea. So, Matt, how about you start us off and tell us a little bit about Lion. Yeah, so Lion is my pick for the Golden Globe Best Picture and also my Oscar pick for Best Picture. And it's cool because I actually got to watch this movie before it came out in theaters because... Uh, my sister, she lives in New York City and works with Harvey Weinstein of the Weinstein Company, so she was able to get this on DVD before it even came out in theater, so I was get, able to get a uh, quick sneak peek of it before, and it is absolutely amazing. Like It lives up to the billing, lives up to all the critically acclaimed. It, it follows a, a, the story of a young boy in India who gets uh, lost from his family and then gets adopted away into Australia and then follows his entire life of figuring out where he was in India when he was just a five-year-old boy and going back and trying to find his mother. So it's really cool to see like his growth as a person and then his journey back to finding his homeland and his mother and stuff like that. So it's really, really cool, very very cool drama, definitely something you should all check out. Yeah, that's an awesome like scoop that you got. I might actually have to bring you back uh, if you're getting more of those uh, from the Weinsteins. That's kind of sweet. Totally spectrum. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, I hadn't really heard a whole lot about Lion. Have, have you, Grant? No, I hadn't. Dark Horse pick, man. Dark Horse pick. Yeah, uh, it might pull it up. Sounds pretty sweet. Uh, it's got the guy from, uh, what's that? Slumdog? Slumdog, yeah. Well, it's a movie about Indian. Also, Indy, they have, like, like three. Also, they have, like, three. So, yeah, that was... M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. Yeah. Steven Spielberg. Director. Yeah. <laughs> only, only puts out the best. The, the, yeah, the new Spielberg. Yeah, yeah. the new split. Spielberg man. Who yeah, to go through the split. Come <laughs> on. Uh, yeah, Last Airbender, where all the characters from the anime were ethnically diverse, but in the movie, only the villains are ethnically diverse. <laughs> 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 yeah, real classy Shyamalan. All right. Uh, next, we got Hell or High Water. Uh, first of all, have either of you seen this, or uh, do you, do you want to see it? I have not, but I've heard it's a very No Country for Old Men type, and I was a huge No Country for Old Men guy, and a very gritty, like, western sort of thing like that, and... But like a modern western. Yeah, more of a modern western. No, uh, what's that guy's... Javier Bardem or whatever? Oh, yeah, like yeah, that. Sugar. That was like his... Yeah, name. so yeah. Anton Not Chagall. him, but they, yeah. they put in... What's the actor's name? What, Jeff Bridges? I'm confused. Jeff Bridges and the guy from Avatar. Oh. oh. Sam Worthington. Sam Worthington. Is he not? No, Chris Pine. Yeah. Oh, fuck me then. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to toss this one over to Grant. <laughs> nice. um, I haven't heard much about Hell or High Water, but I do really like Westerns, and I was a huge fan of of a country, of no country for old man, just like Dick Cow was. And, I mean, I got to say, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm definitely going to look it up when I get home. Yeah, it's one that uh, I really wanted to see in theaters, didn't get a chance uh, back when I was real busy. But um, I think uh, it has a very good chance of winning this award. I know uh, Ben Foster uh, gave a really great performance, at least from what I've heard. And I've heard that it's uh, maybe Chris Pine's best performance ever. Um, so it's one that's like at the top of my list I need to see. I'll definitely be talking about that more when I get to my Top Movies of the Year one, uh, like Top Movies of the Year episode, and it deserves some praise. So uh, Hacksaw Ridge. Neither of you have seen this, right? I have not. I have not. Again, Garfield. I was mentioning Garfield earlier. Great dude. Brit playing an American role. It's fine. It's fine. But I think he does a great job in Hacks on a Ridge. Yeah. Uh, this is right now my favorite movie of the year. And I think I mentioned it uh, maybe last week. I just think that this is like such an important story to be told about a true American hero. I think there's so many people in this country who like don't have as much respect as they should for like our military and our veterans and I think that this is just such a great like story about that man and it just does justice to him and all of the other men who served um, in 
in World War II and just in our in the military uh, any time. And Mel Gibson is back. I mean, this. I mean, it's not Braveheart because Braveheart's like maybe the greatest movie of all time. But like, this is up there. It's one of my favorite war movies already. Might be my favorite movie of the past few years. I think uh, all of the performances all around are incredible. Even like Vince Vaughn as the drill sergeant is great. Uh, I didn't see that coming, but yeah, like I said, I'll, I've been talking about it and I'll talk about it more, but this is my pick for best movie of the year right now, and I hope it wins this award. So, uh, next one, Manchester by the Sea. What do you guys think of this? It's an Affleck, man. It's bound to win. It's wicked awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this has been getting a ton of praise as well. I know it's at like 98% Rotten Tomatoes or something, but it's just a story about uh, Casey Affleck, whose brother passes away, and he has to um, look after his nephew. He's uh, the guardian of his nephew now. So it looks like a great drama, I think, and it is just now about to come out here. It's been out in like California for like a month, so I've really been wanting to see this. I'm excited that I'll finally get the chance, but Grant, what were your thoughts of like what you saw so far from Manchester by the Sea. I think it looks good. It's like it's, uh, it's like, I mean, I'm not, I'm usually not a huge fan of dramas, but like the ones that, I mean, the Afflecks are in are generally very good. The Bo- the Bostonian dramas. They're usually. wicked awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got a wicked hat on for all the Afflecks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I haven't seen Tom too much Brady. of Casey Affleck's work. I, I can't say it's, the best, but I mean, apparently he's really stepped it up in this movie, so I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yep, so that's what we have for uh, the Golden Globes, and our last piece of news today, it's a, we're not going to talk about this long, but Patrick Wilson has been cast in Aquaman as the villain Orm, also known as Ocean Master, so I don't really know a whole lot about Orm, I guess he's like Aquaman's half-brother, um... So, Aquaman's like half man, half Atlantean, so this guy's like his half brother who's full human. So, Patrick Wilson, are we happy that he's going to be in the DC universe? Um, I don't know. I mean, like, I like him as an actor. I like what he's been in. I just, like, I mean, I like The Conjuring and Insidious. I just I don't have anything of him really in a villain role. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't really see him as that, but I don't, I'm not saying he couldn't do a good job with it. I just don't really know where he'll take it. Yeah. I know, he's no he's no Atlantean like my boy Matt Ryan, so I don't know how he's going to do in this role. Yeah, uh, that, was, that was real great, Matt. Uh, <laughs> I, I think he can pull it off. Um, I mean, yeah, we haven't seen him in a villain role so far, but I think that he's shown some acting chops, so I uh, look forward to seeing him in Aquaman. Um so, we're actually pre-recording this show on Tuesday, so if there's any news on Wednesday, we'll talk about that next week. Um, so now we're going to get into our main discussion of Christmas movies, and we're just going to talk about our favorite Christmas movies. So, the first one we're talking about is Elf. Matt, you want to start us off talking about Elf? Yeah, so one of the all-time classics, I believe kind of a, a modern classic of our day and age. We like Our, our parents have, like, you know, the White Christmas and... Uh, a Christmas Story and all those older ones, the Griswolds, all kinds of stuff like that. But this is definitely like our kids of the 90s and 2000s, like real hallmark classic of our era. So definitely near and dear to our hearts. Uh, big big fan of Elf. Arguably one of Will Ferrell's best movies, but definitely a different role than he usually plays. And it was cool because this was actually one of his, I think it was his first movie after SNL, correct? I cannot... I'm fairly certain. I think old school school was before. Uh, Uh, They're both in 2003, I think. Okay. So I can can tell you. You know, check the stats. Quick internet Google for you viewers at home. I'll get that. But yeah, this is cool because it was like his first real step into the limelight. And I think he absolutely nailed it and possibly his best one ever. Which is interesting for like your first movie out as like a true film actor being like one of your best. A really cool like entrance into the film world. Yeah. Yeah, Um, Grant. Yeah, I'm a, I would. I'm. I'm gonna. I think Old School might have come out first because I think that was a summer movie, and then Elf Old School was, was first. Yeah. Yeah, and then oh, 2003 Elf, actually. Yeah. Elf would have been. Oh, and, and in the the oh, Elf yeah. or Old School? Uh, Name that quote. It's old, old School, school obviously. Ah, <laughs> thought, I, thought I had a stumper there. Yeah. Right. All right. Hey, what are the four main food groups? 
candy, candy canes, candy corn, and syrup. There we go. Yeah, Elf, I mean, it is a classic. I know it came out in 2003, but it's going to be watched for just as long as, you know, like you said, White Christmas. It'll be watched for a very long time. I think pretty much anyone can watch that movie and just laugh the whole time. Um, James Caan is really great as, like, Stone Cold, like, Dad. his father. Yeah, just, I think that uh, that's a What's great, a candy like, grail? I want one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Usually they just put my name to Jingle Bell or something. <laughs> I love uh, the scene when he's in the uh, he's in the mail room and starts dancing with all like the thugs because yeah. he he's drinking like the coffee that has the uh, alcohol in it. Yeah, it gets wild. Yeah, there's so many so many classic scenes in uh, Elf that we could just point out that just really stand out. Anything mm-hmm. that really stands out to you, Grant? I mean, I mean, it's just like one of those enjoyable movies that like it's not something you really can get tired of like the jokes True. stay the yeah. jokes stay funny it is timeless like you can watch it a million good. times and it's still yeah, yeah. honestly like, the best scene in the whole movie is when he's describing the north pole and he goes like well then we tried uh got what was it goblins or whatever but they had gas and it goes like, <laughs> 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 it's just like the goblin farting it's really funny yeah so we all love elf uh was there a whole lot else we wanted to say about elf i think we're good yeah we're good yeah one of the one of the classics our next one is Christmas Vacation. Uh, who wants to start us off on this one, Grant? Oh, Christmas Vacation is classic. The Griswolds, um, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember seeing this movie for the first time. It's, I mean, it's definitely one of my favorites. I'm not going to say it's, like, the best Christmas movie, because I think there are others that are more classic, and this one's, like, a lot of slapstick. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a very enjoyable movie. I, I really like it. Yeah, Chevy Chase is just great yeah. in that. I mean... I love the scene where he uh, he's driving and that guy's trying to pass him. It's like towards the very beginning. He tells his kids to look at a deer and then flips off the guy next to him when they're all looking the other way. And, uh, you know, he it's just uh, real classic, like uh, Beverly D'Angelo, like grabbing his crotch towards the end. Like just a lot of uh, a lot of great humor in there that is borderline R-rated, but, uh, you know, it's PG-13, so... Yeah, and going with our out. going with our trend of SNL guys going to uh, the big screen, Chevy Chase in the role as Clark Griswold, is it Clark? Yeah, yeah, Clark Griswold, and then we had Will Ferrell in S- SNL from Elf, so kind of a cool correlation with our top uh, Christmas movies. Yeah, and I love the scene when he's like uh, flirting with that uh, with that lady at the mall, yeah. and then like his son walks over, he's like, uh, "Look, you can like," she's like showing him like like, the thong, like, how high it is, and he's, like, uh, yeah. he's, like, tells his son, like, look how high that line is, he's, like, oh, shoot, like, that, that's real great, um, like, messing up his words, he, he's, like, uh, it's, it's a bit nipply in here, and she's, like, can I take something out for you, it's, it, real classic, just, uh, immature guy humor, but, uh, that's real, what, that's real what guy, guy movie. Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah, I don't know, anything else on Christmas Vacation for you I'm guys? Good. No, I'm good. All right, well, now let's talk about what I think is the best Christmas movie of all time, Die Hard. Oh, yeah. Grant, why do we love Die Hard? Die Hard's this class is like the quintessential Bruce Willis movie. I mean, it's the best. I mean, again, never gets old. Can't. You know, it's just such a hard movie to dislike. Like, if someone says that they don't like Die Hard, like, there's something wrong with it. Oh, them. yeah. Like, they're, like... It's just a very good movie, very well put together. The villain is fantastic. Where's this one set, by the way? It's in the LA. office building of his wife. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. I mean, I mean, some people don't consider it a Christmas movie. Yes. It was released in July, but it's during Christmas time at yeah. a Christmas party. The reason it's not a Christmas movie is it was released in July, and a summer blockbuster. Like, I don't care if it's about Christmas. If it's released in July, it's not a. Christmas movie. It's not for the Christmas audience. It is uh, definitely a Christmas it's movie. It's definitely a Christmas movie. Ho, who, ho, who watches it? Now I have Christmas a machine. Movie. I do. Because it's about Christmas. It gets me in the Christmas mood. Alright, who's oh. got a good Alan Rickman voice? <laughs> Alan Rickman. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the turtle joke for the party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it you say? yippee ki <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a uh, quotable movie, you know. Uh, come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. Uh, I mean... It's so great because uh, John McClane, who it's crazy that we haven't talked about this yet because, like, movies with McClane. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, uh, 
he's just like an everyman. I mean, he's a police officer, but he's not like the Terminator or anything. And he goes in and just kicks ass. I know it's just guys guy movie. Yeah, but like it, anyone can enjoy this movie. It's not just a guy's. Hans Gruber, probably the best action movie villain of all time. Alan Rickman gives an incredible performance. Uh, he's got the accent and he's got the attitude. You gotta. Everyone loves to hate Hans Gruber, and I haven't seen a better action movie villain since then. And rest in peace, Alan Rickman. I mean, that's. I oh yeah, really Rickman died, him. man. Yeah. Oh. That 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 one hit me hard. So, we all miss uh, Alan Rickman. Anything else on Die Hard? I mean, obviously it's one of the greatest action movies of all time, but we are getting also one of the greatest time. Christmas movies. Greatest time. Christmas movies of all time. Yeah, it's oh. a double whammy there. So. We'll move on to Home Alone. Um, I guess I'll start with Home Alone. I think it's a great uh, Christmas movie, one that anyone can enjoy, because Joe Pesci doesn't uh, swear throughout the whole thing, although he struggles very hard not to. Uh, but that could be a very different movie <laughs> if it was like a gritty R-rated movie where they were all, where they were actually like, you know, like serious violence in there. That'd be interesting. But mm -hmm. it's got great slapstick humor. Now, it's a shame that Macaulay Culkin's a heroin addict now, but I think we all enjoy... Is Home Macaulay Alone. Culkin dead? I don't know, I'm pretty sure Just he's about. not dead. Just about. <laughs> I, th I thought he was dead. No, but one thing I'd like to bring up about this movie is, what was the mortgage on the... Or what's what's their name? What's their last name? The uh, McAllister's. McAllister's yeah. What's the mortgage on the McAllister's house? Have you seen that thing? That is a huge house. How much money was that dad making to take nine people to Paris for Christmas with that house? What was his job? I don't know. Do you see question. that house? Never, Nine never people that to Paris yeah. on Christmas. I think Mrs. McAllister is up for the award of worst movie mom of all time. Honestly, Leaf, just she leaves miserable. her behind twice. Maybe Skylar. Skylar White might be the worst mom of all time, but that's Breaking Bad, not a movie. Okay. okay. She's but still. Yeah. But we all enjoy Home Alone. You know, it's another dysfunctional family. Uh, like Christmas Vacation, but much different movie. Um, let's move on. Polar Express. I think you guys were going to talk about this one more than um, I was. Well, I mean, yeah, again, Polar Express, again, is a obviously going to be yeah. another classic of our time, and it's just like, definitely just a movie you watch as a kid, and you're just like, oh, wait. Yeah, Santa's, Santa's definitely real. Like, yeah, definitely like a nostalgia, no, a yeah. nostalgia movie like for it, sure. It brings you back to like the feeling of being like a kid again. Yeah, you like, catch a, catch a glimpse of him ringing the bell or like riding the train with the hot chocolate and stuff. Yeah. Brings you back, man. It's a real, it's a real uh, like an innocent movie. You know? Yeah, and I think the animation is phenomenal for like, oh, how old yeah. it was. You know what? I was actually going to disagree. Completely. You don't like the animation? I think the animation is kind of creepy in that movie. It is creepy. And, uh, it's creepily human. Yeah. No, like, all, like everyone looks like Tom Hanks. It's real weird. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, he played, like, a, a lot of different roles in there. And I don't know, that, that hot chocolate scene you guys were saying you liked that, I just thought that song was, like, actually kind of bad. So, I don't know. I'm out. I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Kind of disagree. I've had enough of this shit. Yeah. Like, we're done. enough of your shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So if we still got viewers left, we're going to cut this part. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they like it. Um, all right, so let's talk about a good Christmas movie. And this is our finale. We're going to talk about the one that everyone watches every year, A Christmas Story. I think we all love A Christmas Story. It's one of the greats. That's why they play it on TBS for all day long, every Christmas, and it's just a classic. There's so many moments in there that you can just point to and just just love those moments. You know, I'm going to talk about, I think my favorite moment is at the end when they're in the uh, Japanese restaurant and they're like, deck the horrors with bowels, with bowers of hari, fa ra 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 <laughs> Just a lot of racism. <laughs> like, we were okay with it uh, I mean, that, then. there was no problem with that back then, so I think everyone loves that. We, uh, we didn't mind. No one minded. Yeah. What, what moments stand out to you, Grant? Uh, the Red Rider BB gun. I mean, that's... You'll shoot probably, your eye out. Probably one of the most classic. Um, the, the Santa at the mall or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the Oval really Team. Yeah. Where yeah. everybody's just... It's like a Christmas team and he goes, Son of a bitch! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An yeah. absolute classic. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the soap in the mouth, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's great. Drink more Oval Team. Son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, he's got the bullies who have, like, red eyes and yellow teeth or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, think of all the classic moments, like the, the tongue on the pole, like, the Red Rider BB gun. Just a, a, a classic upon classics. Yeah, maybe the quintessential Christmas movie. And if you didn't know, Ralphie, the guy, the main actor, yeah. is also an elf as the guy who says, oh, yeah. the cotton-headed ninny muggins guy. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's like I think he directed um, Couples Retreat with Vince Vaughn. You know, and that, that was that the last movie he had. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the first and last. Yeah, he's like good buddies with Vince Vaughn, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, that guy, uh, he's probably got a decent amount of money now, but not doing a whole lot anymore. But hey, we loved him. So that's our talk on Christmas movies. And now, just to close out, we're going to talk quickly about Rogue One. It comes out this Thursday. Uh, I am incredibly excited. So far, it's getting overwhelmingly positive reviews. And how are you guys feeling about Rogue One? Are you excited? Are you worried? Uh, what are you most looking forward to seeing? And just what are your overall expectations for Rogue One? Grant? Um, I think Rogue One's going to be good. I like the concept of it. I Hopefully, I think it's like with how similar The Force Awakens was to the plot of, of Star Wars and destroying the Death Star, like, because it, it was essentially the same. I mean, there were new twists and everything. It was definitely a great movie. It was just, I'm, I'm hoping that a Rogue, that Rogue One kind of, like, makes something completely different from the formula that they've made, and I hope it really works out. Yeah, man. Yeah, so, I think everybody was really hoping for a Star Wars 8 right now, because just the anticipation is building so greatly with Star Wars 7 last winter and stuff like that, but I think this is a cool break to, like, kind of give us a taste of Star Wars again without giving us uh, Episode Eight. I think it's really cool. I think uh, I think Gian Erso is going to be really cool in it. I think it's going to give us a lot of background and stuff like that. Is it going to be the best Star Wars? No, of course it won't be. It's just, it doesn't have that kind of, like, new feel to it of a new, a brand new Star Wars, you know? It kind of feels like it's, it's in between. It doesn't really have its own identity. It's not old, it's not new, sort of thing like that. But I, I, I'm really excited, definitely a movie I will be going to see in theaters and stuff like that. I, I'm a diehard uh, Star Wars guy, so I, I'm really hopeful of it, but more hopeful for Episode 8. Okay. Yeah, I, um, I'm i very excited. Uh, I think that they're really going to capture that gritty war movie feeling uh, within the Star Wars universe. I think it's going to be the best movie that shows what it was like to live under the oppression of the Empire. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm I'm very much uh, looking forward to that. And just to see, like, the team dynamic, I think there's going to be so many, like, new characters that we're introduced to that we're going to care about and watch them for this one movie and then never see them again, whether they don't make it out alive or just aren't going to be relevant anymore. But I, I am looking forward to seeing all these new characters. And even though, yeah, it's not Episode Eight, uh, I think uh, it's still... A, a Star Wars movie, and as a huge Star Wars fan, I couldn't be more excited. So that's all we have for you all today. Um, thank you to everyone for watching. Next week is going to be our Rogue One spoiler review, so we are talking spoilers. You have a week to see the movie, so go see it, and then you'll be able to watch our show next week. And thank you to Grant and to Matt for being here. I had a good time. I hope you guys did. Quite changing no problem. Experience. Classic time. Great being on the show again. Yeah. Yeah, Grant, I'll be sure to have you back sometime. Oh. Yeah, uh, keep doing God's work, Andrew. <laughs> thank you. Godspeed. Godspeed. And uh, thanks to everyone for watching. And last thing I'll say to our viewers across the pond in England, happy Christmas. Harry. We finally kiss goodnight. How I hate going out in the storm. But if you really hold me tight.